Hello friends, how are you doing today? In this video, I just wanted to cover the big overview of well-architected framework. So when it comes to well-architected framework, if you are a solution architect, either a platform solution architect or in-process solution architect or cloud solution architect, you must follow this operational excellence, security pillar, performance, cost optimization, sustainability, hybrid cloud pillar, and AI pillar, all those pillars that you must focus on if you are focusing on the well architected framework while designing an architecture for your organization. So if you are a solution architect, you must come across all these pillars when you involve in a project from the scratch. So let's go and take a look on this each pillar. So basically when it comes to this well architected framework, it is not going to be sticking with one particular cloud service provider it is going to be different for different cloud service providers. For example, if AWS is uh, talking about well architected framework, they focus on operational excellence, security, performance, sustainability, cost optimization, all those steps. But if you take IBM, IBM's well architected framework focuses on hybrid cloud and AI. And top of that, they have very strong presence in sustainability and all other areas like operational excellence, performance, and uh, reliability, all those focus areas. And if you take Azure or Google Cloud, they also have their own strength and they talk and present as a strong area in well architected framework. So when it comes to solution architect, irrespective of all these service providers, you must focus on the core areas which are required for your application to run fine in any environment, either it is a cloud or on-premises or anywhere, edge server or anywhere. So let's take one by one and go with a clear understanding of what exactly this well-architected framework means, okay? So when it comes to well-architected framework, what exactly it means, if you are planning to architect a solution for your organization or for your customer, the first thing you must keep in mind is it has to be reliable and the solution must be adhering to all the principles of architecture. So that is the key area that you, ha you have to keep in mind if you are a solution architect. And what are all those key areas to keep in mind? One, the operational excellence. And second one is the security. And third one is reliability. And fourth one is sustainability. And fifth one is cost optimization. And sixth one is hybrid cloud. And seventh one is AI architecture. So this well-architected framework will go beyond uh, a particular limit because when the technology evolves, this well architected framework will go accordingly. So here in this video, we are going to talk about each pillar at high level and see what benefit it is going to add for your architecture design. So let's take the first one is operational excellence or operational pillar. So the operation pillar is common for most of the cloud service providers. Even if you are not uh, deploying your application in any public cloud, if you are using private cloud, in that case also, this operational pillar will play a major role. So as a solution architect, what exactly you will do here? When you design the solution for your organization, you must take care of all the day zero, day one, and day two operations in your application. For example, if you are planning to migrate your legacy application, which is running on the private cloud or uh, on-premises to a public cloud, what exactly you consider when you think about this operational excellence pillar? So you must know what type of operations details. For example, if you are deploying the application in a public cloud, how that will scale, how that will work fine, and what are all the automation areas to focus on? And how do you configure the application to run fine? And what type of uh, mechanisms that you implement to do a port push? And what type of mechanism that you are going to do for the deployment? And what type of mechanism that you are going to uh, do with your application so that it will run fine and perform better for your organization? So. When it comes to the operational excellence, you must think about the cost optimization as well. So when you are planning to implement this operational excellence pillar for your application, 
or platform or infrastructure, you must think about how to spend the money effectively to utilize all these operational excellence configurations. So that is one thing that you must keep in mind. And second one is um, the security pillar. When it comes to security pillar, you must think about the security across all the levels, starting from your application UI and the platforms level security, infrastructure level security, and the entire uh, region level security and zone level security. All those things you must consider. But also when it comes to the application which is running on any of the platform, what type of application level security, log flow, network security, all those stuff you must keep in mind. And make sure that when you implement this security pillar in your organization or architecture, you must also think about what money that you are going to spend for implementing this uh, security uh, pillar and how that is going to impact your overall cost. So as a solution architect, you must keep this in mind whenever you implement any uh, well-architected framework, you must keep the cost optimization across all the pillars so that you can save a lot of money for your organization. And third one is reliability. So what exactly the reliability pillar means? The reliability is ability of your application platform or infrastructure that can run without any disturbance to your organization, even if the failure occurs across all the levels. Suppose if you, are, uh, if you take application layer, if the application fails due to some reason, your organization business should not get impacted. And also if your platform fails for some reason, your application and platform should run fine. And similarly, if the infrastructure fails for some reason, the infrastructure platform and application should run fine without impacting the business. So this is the reliability, the ability of the system uh, to run fine even in the failure scenarios. So when you consider this uh, reliability pillar, you must keep that in mind, how many instances of the application that you're going to create, how many zones you're going to create, how many regions you're going to create, how you are planning your uh, disaster recovery mechanism, how the RTO and RPO is going to play a role in this uh, well architected framework, all those things you must consider. And the next thing is cost optimization while implementing serial reliability. So as I said earlier, you must keep this cost optimization across all the well architected framework pillars so that you can save a lot of money for your organization. Uh, so for example, if you are taking to implement a reliability by having this uh, multiple regions, multiple zones, you must consider the logic or the algorithms provided by the public cloud service provider. And also you must think about your company applications capability to serve the customer or the organization so that you can plan accordingly. You don't need to have the hard and fast rule to follow the public cloud service providers algorithm to implement this reliability pillar. So basically you can relax the reliability approach according to your application's importance. Like if your application is not a critical application, you can plan accordingly so that you can save some money for your organization. The fourth one is um, performance optimization. Mm -hmm. So basically when it comes to performance optimization, you must look at the overall performance optimization. It's not going to be your only application. Sometimes you focus only on the application performance and you forget about uh, platform or infrastructure plat uh, performance. So if your infrastructure or platform is not uh, adhering to this performance pillar and only if you focus on your application you will become a, a failure architecture um, you will create a failure architecture so you have to keep that in mind so when it comes to this um, performance optimization think about how you can do a performance test for your application platform and infrastructure and follow the well architected framework provided by your public cloud service provider or your organization if your organization is developing and keeping your own well architected framework and um, the final one is cost optimization. We talked about cost optimization across all the pillars. So make sure that you spin up the required instance and required infrastructure or platform so that you will not end up spending a lot of money for a particular application. And think about stopping the application when it is not needed to run and think about spot instances and reserved instances, all those uh, steps so that you can uh, save a lot of money. 
and when it comes to the support options if your application doesn't need a primary support or, or advanced support you don't need to go for it so that you can save money in the cost optimization pillar and um, when it comes to hybrid cloud pillar if you are planning to run your application in multiple clouds some of the uh, organizations may have the multi cloud strategy based on their applications or business um, lobs needs for example if you are an organization where you want to run some type of uh, retail uh, businesses and you may not go with um, amazon because of the reason that you know and you may want to put your uh, retail application in azure cloud and you want to keep the finance related uh, application in ibm cloud so you will have this multi cloud or hybrid cloud strategy so for that you must know how to actively or effectively use this hybrid cloud approach with the help of this hybrid cloud pillar provided by ibm um, organization so when it comes to hybrid cloud you know that you can manage the workload which are running in multiple environments including private cloud and public cloud or on premises so that you will have a single pane of glass where you can see all the applications which are running in different clouds in one view also you can control monitor configure deploy in a single view way so that your developers administrators can have better life compared to managing the applications which are running in different cloud with a different monitoring capability different <clears throat> application performance monitoring capability different resource management capability in order to avoid all these uh, hassles you can think about going with a hybrid cloud approach with the help of the strong platform red hat open source container orchestration platform so that you can manage your applications which are running in different cloud environments and the uh, last one is ai pillar so when it comes to ai pillar you know the world is moving towards generative ai so by 2024 most of the organizations are going to adopt this generative ai particularly for their critical applications so that uh, they can reap the benefit out of this generative ai so if you are a solution architect working in an organization try creating the business use cases around generative ai suppose if you are running an application the finance application in your uh, private cloud environment what are all the generative ai use cases that you can identify so that you can infuse the applications which are running in your private cloud with the help of strong generative ai tools like what's next so you can implement the algorithms and standardizations provided by the ai pillar by ibm and other organizations so that you can design the solution perfectly according to the well architected framework provided by these organizations so as i said earlier the well architected framework is not created by one particular organization each organization has their own view of well architected framework you can go and explore their well architected framework in each areas wherever they are strong in so uh, we have covered all the major areas of well architected framework at high level if you are a solution architect always keep in mind that you must implement this well architected framework whenever you create an architecture and your uh, mindset should be thinking in all the well architected framework areas when you provide a solution do not lose your focus by concentrating or focusing only on one particular area for example if your architecture has a problem of operationalizing in a particular cloud environment do not focus only on the operation pillar also widen your thoughts and keep your mindset open to think in other areas of well architected framework like security reliability sustainability cost optimization performance optimization all those areas do not limit your thought only on the particular area so this way as a solution architect you can implement the well architected framework for your organization in better way so that you can create a flawless architecture for your organization hope this video is helpful to know about what are all the well architected frameworks available in this world and also these 
Well Architect Frameworks are not limited to a particular company. It is unique for each organization. And if you are dealing with a particular organization where a set of Well Architect Frameworks is followed, follow that and make sure that you implement this Well Architect Framework for every architecture that you create. That will be a perfect solution for your organization. Hope you like this video. Like this video, give a thumbs up and share it to your friends so that they will also get benefit out of it. Take care. Bye.